ready to go live? Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Welcome to New Life Christian Fellowship here at 1321 Providence Road in the city of Brandon, Florida. Amen. Amen. There's no place to be than here under the leadership of our beloved dear Pastor Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register. Amen. We thank and praise God that we have a place that we can come into and physically worship to gather in his name to worship him during this midweek service hallelujah we hope that you will get your bibles and get ready and be prepared tonight to receive the word as we feast upon the word and we take an opportunity to partake in this midweek worship experience amen the bible says in romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And I also like to read over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 58, which actually says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, Lord. We ask that your light shine upon us on this day, God. We thank you, Father God, for your spirit that forgives us, oh God, even when we fall short, oh God. We thank you that you're a loving God and a just God. And Lord, we can't do this work without you and without your spirit, oh God. Lord, we come week after week after week after week, oh God, but Lord, Without you, we are nothing, oh God. Without you, Lord Jesus, and without your love, without your compassion, without your Holy Spirit, we're just making a bunch of noise. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, to have your way today. Have your way in us, oh God. May the word come clear for us tonight, oh God. May we receive it. May those who are tuning in, oh God, take the opportunity to hear and not just become hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, we give hallelujah. God a praise in the house one more time. Amen. Just give God praise, he's worthy. How y'all doing tonight? Good to see you, man. Good to see everybody tonight, amen. Chris, how are you, son? Back there on your job, huh? Hallelujah. Bishop requested the song. Yeah, yeah. Walk this in is, the light. That yeah, this is, light. This has Jesus. been in my heart this morning. I was, the I was, you didn't get a chance world. to hear me. I was singing it solo. And they were shouting on the phone this morning. <laughs> what you, Chris? You all got happy. Oh, 
Those hands together. Hey, you high tech folk out there. Come on and give God some praise. 
I ain't nothing like them old songs. I said, ain't nothing like them old songs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Wednesday night Bible study. Here in this wonderful place, this city of Brandon, Florida. We thank God for the people that have come here tonight. Thank God for the, for the people that are in place, the team. Amen. Wasn't that wonderful worship tonight? Give God some praise for that. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Time. Amen. Thank God for you guys. Um, this morning, I tell you, I was up early because I, I realized God began to speak to me about some things about my life. And, and so um, I, I got on the phone this morning in prayer and I sung two songs. Yeah, I was, I was in a different place this morning. I got up, I had showered, I was ready to go, man. I was just... And, I, and God just said to me, you know, he said to me, um, have you ever looked under the hood? I said, under the hood? What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, when you look up under the hood of a car, he said, you ever look up under the hood and seen how magnificent, how wide and the engine is that you have? Have you ever seen it? He said, you ever took time? Because we put so much stock in the outside, the external things. We Always the wrong things that we don't focus in on what he's put in us. And all times we miss the glory that's in us. Everybody, God gives you, gives you a part of his glory. Isn't that wonderful? He said you were made in his image. That's a part of God's glory that we can appreciate if we, if we really tap into who he made us to be. And so when somebody used to talk to me about um, favorite scriptures, like you got a favorite scripture. I, they all, I don't necessarily have a favorite one, but, I, but these few that I'm going to read tonight, they really kind of stick with me. They've stuck with me for a while. I had even thought about putting uh, these scriptures, uh, a couple of them, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, because the church is a body, and, but uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, they really, they really, uh, I mean, they drive home a, a point every day to me. I, I get up every morning and I realize, I want you to realize this today. You know, when you, when you, when you, uh, when you are a runner and you're running in an official race, um, you just can't um, uh, come off the streets or get out your car and get in the race. Normally, you have to register. Somebody say register. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a number. Put the number on your back. And you got to have shorts on and shoes. Th that's people that know they're running. But for, for all of you out there that don't, that don't know you're running because you ain't got no number on your back, you're in a race. Everybody's in a race. Just a fact of life. Whether you, whether you choose to call it a race or not, you're in a race. It's a clock. It's ticking every day. Which means there's a starting point and there's a finish line. Amen. So we'll talk about those things tonight. Give you like seven points. Let's read uh, first in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 9, 24, 27. I'm going to read it in two different versions in, in the King James and then the Amplified Bible. Amen. Here begins the reading of God's Word. Thanks again for tuning in. Hit like and share. Call somebody. This is important. This is really, you know. Um, and, and the other thing I want to draw your attention, how well do you take care of yourself? You know, that's, I want to hammer that home, Chris, tonight. I want to hammer home. How, how well are you taking care of yourself? Hmm. Normally, you take, you take a, 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 as good as care of yourself as you value who you are. If if somehow or another you struggle with your purpose and your value, it will affect how you take care of yourself. The more you value yourself, the better you take care of yourself. This is what it says. Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so I fight, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Now just swinging. But I, I keep under my body, but I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection, least 
That's all right. Least that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Somebody say amen. Listen, what, what, what a travesty to run a race and get to the finish line and, and, and find out you've been disqualified. Think about that, Anna, uh, um, David, Deacon. You running, right? You got up every morning. You've been running. You've been running. You, however old you are, you've been running. And then all of a sudden you get to the finish line and they say, I'm sorry. All that energy, all those stinkers you wore out. I, I was trying to tell you while you were running that you were out of bounds or you were you were disqualified, but I couldn't get your attention. You just kept running. You wouldn't listen to me, but you've been disqualified. Do you not know that? No. Okay, here, here's the amplifier. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? All the runners run. Somebody said the other day on, on um, I think it was Cassandra. She said, man, think about this. Normally when you see a race, you don't see people start a race going one way, and then all of a sudden the people that are running one way, somebody turns around and goes back the other way. That's not something you see normally. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run their very best? That's important. They run, see Diana? They run their very best to win. But only one receives the prize. Run your race. Somebody say, my race. Your race is not my race. My race is not your race. Run your race. Somebody say, run your race. It says, run your race in such a way that you may seize, not, not just get the prize, but seize it. Amen. Seize the prize and make it yours. Seize it and make it yours. Not wait for somebody to give it to you, but once you get there, grab it. Make it yours. Ownership. Not every athlete who goes into training, not every athlete, those that you've watched sports, not every uh, person that plays football or basketball or, or whatever they might be playing competes at a high level. Not every athlete who goes into training and competes at the game is disciplined and exercises self-control in all things. They do it to win a crown that withers. But we, but we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I don't care how old I am. I said, I don't care how old I am. Sure, but I don't care the condition of my body. If my mind is still functioning, I'm still running. That means that my, my, body, my body might not be running, but my mind is. So sometimes we think because our body's not working properly that that means the race is over. No, you still got a mind. Look here, when John was in jail, he was, writing a, he was writing a letter from prison. He was still ministering. When Paul was in prison, it didn't stop his ministry. He was still writing. So I said, I can still be busy. Still got a mind. No matter what my condition is, my mind is still functioning. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not fail around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. <laughs> but like a boxer, I strictly, I strictly discipline my body. I make it my slave. I make my body my slave. Before you try to make somebody else do something, have you made your own body your slave? Isn't this something we always try to tell somebody? Do this. Do your homework. Make up your bed. Do this. Always trying to tell somebody. Always trying to be the enforcer. But you can't. Can you enforce your, yourself to do things? Do you have the ability to stop? Do you have the ability to shut up? Do you have the ability to, to curb your appetite? Do you, have the, do you have the ability to be firm with yourself? I strictly discipline my body, make it my slave, so that after I preach the, preach the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as, a un, as unfit for service. Father, have your way in this place tonight. Help me do what you ordained me to do. Cause the people to hear like they've never heard before. Bind up the strong man. Don't let him interrupt interfere with your business this day, this space that we're in. We claim it for your glory, and we claim it for our edification. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, somebody say amen. So there's six things I want to give you. 
um, six particular things. The first point about the text that is really important, let me just, uh, in the introduction, the passage is one of the great challenges of Scripture, a challenge that every minister and believer should memorize and keep ever before their minds. Paul, and in fact, this is an inside look at the minister. This is a, this is a behind the scenes look, you know, like they're going to show you what it looks like to be a minister. Paul is now giving you a, a, a glimpse into his heart. Are you with me so far? Paul is still, he's giving an inside look in his heart, his ministry, how he views the Christian life in ministry. But the passage is unique in its description for it describes Paul's feelings about the, the Christian life. It's how Paul feels about the life in terms of athletics. He sees it as a runner and a boxer. Somebody say runner and a boxer. No true minister or Christian, understand this, or believer can approach the Christian life with a flabby attitude. Can, you can't approach this race with a flabby attitude. No genuine Christian can indulge the body and its lust and expect to win the incorrupt, incorruptible crown of the Christian life. The Corinth church knew about the games, the Isthmus games, which were second only to the Olympics. Therefore, everybody in the Corinthian church knew the point that Paul was making, unlike the people that come to church here and there and everywhere else. People might think this message is for somebody else. This message is for all of us. So dramatically, Paul says that the Christian minister and the Christian believer can be compared to ath athletes. Shockingly, he says that a true minister and a true believer of the Lord is to live their life just as disciplined as an Olympic athlete. He actually says that we are to keep our bodies under control just as an athlete does. So the first point I want to bring out, whether you realize it or not, is that you are in a race. Somebody say, I'm in a race. I'm in a race. Watch this. I'm in a race, and if I'm in a race, watch this. I, I've got to. I've got to run like I'm in a race. Amen. Listen. I, I nobody. If you ever watch track and field, nobody comes to the starting block, and they feel like you know what? I'm just. I'm gonna lose today. You know. I got all this baby all on, and 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 you know my my. my my legs is all pumped and muscles. I'm just here for sure. I, ain't, I don't really want to win. Nobody comes here and says, I'm, I'm looking for third. They're all looking to win. Somebody say amen. They're all looking to win. So the Christian, so when we enter the race, we're looking to win. In an athletic contest, every runner enters the race for one purpose. Only that is to win. That's why I don't like running around with losers. I don't like losers. They got a mentality. They got a, and if they got a mentality, they create an atmosphere of losing. I don't like hanging around with losers. I didn't say I didn't like hanging around with people that don't, have, that don't look wealthy. I said I don't like hanging around with losers. You can look wealthy and still be a loser. You can look dressed from the top to the bottom and still be a loser. Losing ain't got nothing to do with your clothes. So there's only one winner. So the believer enters the race for only one purpose. Only one purpose. I'm only in this race for one purpose. That's to win. That's, that means, watch this. I strain in running. Anybody ever ran and you had to strain? You know, straining when you're running? Because why? You're trying to get a prize. I'm running hard. And sometimes I got to strain to run. When the last time you strained? And you've done anything strenuous spiritually. What can you do that you can equate that has caused you great stress and caused you great, uh, uh, made you exert so much of your energy that you've done spiritually? What is it? Because I, I guarantee you, you can tell me four or five things that you've done that you've lost, uh, you got weak or you, you got tired. You did it. You clean the house, you wash the clothes, you clean the car, and it got you tired. Tell me one thing that you did spiritually that made you feel like you were straining or exhausting yourself. And most people, most Christians can't tell you anything they've done. The only thing they've said, I was in church, and the church was, it went about an hour and a half, so they kept us in church a long time. Praise and worship went a little long, and pastor was long-winded today. 
And so I was, you know, he's getting on my nerve, working my nerve, ready to get out of there. Don't be supposed to get out at 1 o'clock. When the last time you strain spiritually? And that's why, that's why we struggle emotionally. We struggle emotionally because we're weak spiritually. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So watch this. If I'm running a race, watch this. I got to understand this. Nothing is acceptable except running. So watch this. If I'm running a race and you happen to get in my purview or you happen to get on my street or you happen to come somehow or another, I'm running and I see you running alongside me. I, I have any witnesses here. And then all of a sudden you want to talk and stop. Guess what? I ain't stopping. Now, I can talk and chew gum at the same time. That means I can talk and run. But if you stop, I ain't stopping. So if I'm running, that means walking is not acceptable. Somebody said walking is not acceptable. So you, you've got to ask yourself from a spiritual standpoint, are you running? Or are you walking? Or are you laying down? What, what, what's your position? See, the reason why we have a church is not so that we could just come in and sit down. It's so we can come in and get some inside information about the race so that we can run effectively and we can be productive. So watch this. Walking fast is unacceptable, and jogging is unacceptable. He said run. So if you're jogging, that's not running. And watch this. If you show little concern for the finish line. So, Minister Powell, we get so caught up in the now. I ain't got no clothes now. I ain't got no heat now. I ain't got no man now. I ain't got this now. I ain't got no food now. I ain't got enough money now. I ain't got no good credit now. And you get all caught up in the now, you forget the finish line. You don't even know if your finish line is tomorrow or not. You can't. That's why the Bible tells us that it said that, that a real soldier cannot get caught up in the affairs of this world. He can't get entangled with that stuff. In fact, as a soldier, when we leave and go uh, overseas and stuff like that, they make you sign papers. You have to sign your, your, uh, your will and stuff because guess what? You can't take your family, and guess what? You're going to, you either going to war or you're going to jail. Ain't it right, Carla? You either deploy or you go to jail. And, and you got to start making, making some, some, some statements about, okay, if I don't come back, so-and-so gets this. Anybody hear what I'm saying? That's how serious it is. What, what am I saying? You know that there's a finish line. I don't want to deal with people that don't realize there's a, not a finish line. There's a finish line. There's an end. I want to be pe with people that are conscious. You know, if they understand what a, that there's a finish line, that means they're going to they're gonna value their time and mine. If I'm conscious of a finish line, that means I'm sensitive to time. That means that the clock can stop at any moment for anybody. So no jogging. Jogging is not acceptable. Walking fast is not acceptable. And showing very little concern for the finish line is unacceptable. The point is this. The minister or the believer must run as diligently as they that run in the Olympics. The believer must put on the same kind of vigorous effort. You've seen them? The last time you've done that in prayer, in worship. When last time you had an all-night Bible study? Come on now. Because if not, you, you have no strength. And the Bible says in the day of adversity, if you faint, you had no strength to start with. Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3.14. Give it to me in the Amplified first. See, when I'm running, I'm pressing. Sure what? I'm going to a conference in a couple of weeks. And, and so I'm going to get in shape. <laughs> Why? Because the conference runs from the morning into the evening. 
And so I don't want to get there. And then all of a sudden, I'm having a great time at night. Then I can't get up in the morning. No, I'm going to spend my money. I want to go to every day session and every night session. And I don't want to be bothering nobody. Why? Because I'm going there to get my battery charged. I'm going there to get spiritually uplifted. Look what the text says. I press on towards what? The goal. Every morning I get up. Marcus, I'm pressing. Why? I'm pressing towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Give it to me, the King James. I press towards the mark for the prize. Somebody said the prize. See, but I don't think alike. I come here, there's a prize I'm after, man. Um, I was thinking about this morning, I was going to sing this song. Put your time in. Put your time in. Put your time in. Payday's coming after a while. Put your time. Do you know what happened? One, 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 one Wednesday night, we had Bible study. And Sam's mother, old woman from the country, looked like she was one one generation removed from being a slave. But guess what? I think she owned about 300 acres or 100 acres of land. And she came to our church and she's a little bitty woman. We said, Mother, you got anything you want to say? She said, I just got one thing I want to say. And Mother said, put your time in. I didn't even know what the song was then. He said, put your time in. I said, put your time in. She said, pity coming after a while. And she was right. When you, when you put your time in and you complain, <laughs> you ain't going to get paid. <clears throat> you got to put your time in and even when you put your time in and people don't appreciate you. They don't appreciate the work that you've done. They don't appreciate the, 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 all that you've labored to do. That's all right. Because payday coming after a while. We're not doing this because of people. See, when you get caught up, I did this and I did this and so and so did. Hey, 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 hey. You, you got your eyes on the wrong finish line. You, you watching the wrong things here. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Look what, look, what Timothy, look what Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. So the first thing, remember, I'm running a race, right? You're in a race. Whether you like it or not, you're in a race. Look what he says. I have fought a good fight. Are you, is, the, is the fight you fighting good or are you getting your behind kicked? Oh, I should have said something else. No, I'm something else worse than that. Yeah. I was going to say something else worse than that. Are you fighting a good fight or are you getting your you-know-what whooped? I mean, ask yourself. Watch this. Listen, Anna, I can't believe if I asked you to come up here and, and walk, do a fashion walk up here, nobody would believe that you're getting your kicked. Nobody would believe it. Not the way you look right now. But watch this. If they just listen to you for a little while, they, 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 they would say, wait a minute. How could she look like that and sound like that? Come on, talk to me. Because it, how do you look so good and sound like you so poor? Because watch this. You've been able to, you've been able to cover up your whippings by dressing, dressing over it. So we dress up. While the enemy still whips us. Listen, Paul is saying, I fought a good fight. Ask yourself, is you in a good fight? Is it a good fight? Is it a good fight? Or is it one-sided? Is the devil just kicking your behind? You broke, ugly. Come on, that's all. All you got is just losses. Just, just, a, just been getting your behind, just beat down. Where you at? Where you at? Come on. Uh, guess what? And I know where you at. All I got to do is listen to you for a little while. I can just listen to you for a little while. 
I can hear whether there's praise or defeatism. Whether you live in a place of defeat or you live in a place of hope and victory. For the, for the word of God says that, 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 uh, that, that it, it says that, 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 that what's in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, man speaks. So whenever you start speaking, guess what? It's all heart talk. So I don't care how dressed up you are, I can tell you getting your behind whoop even though you dressed up. Nails done, hair done, and just as raggedy because you cannot defend yourself from the onslaught of the enemy. All you can do is dress up. Paul said, listen, I fought a good fight. I finished my course, and I've kept the faith. He said, watch this. All because he did, he done this. He said, there is laid up for me a crown. Somebody said a crown. He's got the finish in mind. A crown what? A righteous with the Lord, the righteous judge. So give me at that day, and not to me only, but to unto them also that love his appearing. Give it to me in the Amplified Bible. I want you to get this now. He, he, he's not defeated. He's in prison. His life is getting ready to be over. Some of y'all sound like your life is over now. You ain't in jail. Come on. And I've been there. I've been there. Now when I get like that, I don't, I don't get around nobody. Why? Because I know the enemy has, has messed with my mind. And I don't get around anybody because I don't want to infect them with distortion. So I, I, I'll hide away from people and not give the enemy any more opportunity to, to convince me that, I, that he is whipping my behind. Look, he said, I fought the good and worthy and noble fight. It's a good, it's a worthy, and it's a noble fight. He said, and I finished the race. It's a race. Even though he's in jail, he said, I finished. He said, I've kept the faith. Are you keeping it? Do you keep it? Or you let people run you out of church. You let people say this and you stop giving. You stop doing this. Anything goes down, it twists you, it twists you, or make you act like a pretzel, you ain't keep your faith, your faith diminishes. Paul said, hey, no matter what happened, I kept the faith. What do you mean? He firmly guarded the gospel against error. In the future, they're reserved for me the victor's crown. All right, said, for being right with God and doing right. 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 Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that great day, and not to me only, but also to those who have loved and longed for and longed for and welcomed his appearing. Somebody say glory. So I'm running a race to win. I'm going to win. Somebody say I'm going to win. Second thing, watch this. If I'm running, if I'm running, I have strict discipline and training regimen. I have a very strict discipline and training regimen. Very disciplined. Very focused. I have a regimen. Listen, I don't, listen, I don't compromise when it comes to what I got to do from when I get up to the time I go to bed. I'm very disciplined. I'm very focused. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So number two, I live a very disciplined life because I'm always in training. Why? Because I'm trying to gain control over myself. That's what we struggle with. We don't have control over our minds. The enemy gets in our head and our minds and we get messed up. The believer is to strenuously, strenuously discipline himself. I was sharing uh, in the, this morning, uh, I said, uh, President accounted for 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. It said, be ye steadfast. And it means to be firm. Firm. So if you say you're going on a diet or you say that you are not going to do something anymore, you got to be firm with you. You can't be firm with me and you can't be firm with yourself. It says, be ye steadfast, unmovable. So when you make a decision about what you're going to do, guess what? You've got to stand on it. You've 
got to stand right there. Come, come, come hell or shine. You got to stand right there. Why? It's the commitment you made. I didn't have to call you guys out tonight. You made a commitment. You didn't have to call me. I made a commitment. I got to be here. Come on, Chris. So when 7 o'clock came, I said, everybody in place. Why? Guess what? We made a commitment. And when you're, when you're a grown person, whether you're a woman or a man, guess what? Nobody should have to trail behind you and, and, and ask you, are you going to keep your commitments? So number two, I live a very disciplined life. That means that, that I've got to watch what I do between Monday and Sunday. Why? Because they're expecting me to come back here and do this job again. And that means, watch this, I can't do it in a, in a flabby way or, or out of shape. i got to be in shape. And you can tell when somebody's not in shape, they're going to get their behind kicked. You ever see a fighter or a runner or anybody that comes to a race and they're not prepared? A fighter that's not prepared, they get knocked out. They get clowned on. You don't want to get into the fight with the enemy, the fight of your life, and not be prepared. So every runner, every boxer is highly disciplined. They watch what they eat. They watch, they watch what time they go to bed. They watch what they put in their bodies. What are you watching from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep at night? What are you listening to? What are you listening to and what you watching? Because watch this. When 2 o'clock come and the enemy shows up at your front door, what you going to tell him? What, how are you going to defend yourself if all day you've been feeding and feasting on carnality? Been feeding on fleshly things. And the fight ain't in the flesh. The fight is spiritual. And you've done nothing Nothing to prepare for the fight. You're out of shape. And you don't rela realize that there's a finish line. I discipline myself. Watch what I eat. Certainly watch what I think. I watch, I watch what, what I allow you to say about me so I don't get no bad thoughts about myself. I stay focused on the goal. Somebody say goal orientated. So watch this. I hang around with people that are goal orientated. I run with people that are, when I realize that you ain't going nowhere, I, I don't let them know because I don't want to be, I don't want to embarrass them. I want to make them feel bad. But I ease myself. When I see that you have no goals, I got to get out of there because I'm goal orientated. I'm going somewhere. If I'm, and listen, even if I'm going to hell, at least I'm going somewhere. But I'm not going to hell. Amen? Goal orientated. Somebody say goal orientated. He's goal orientated. How to best gear his body and spirit and mind to the end. In spirit, in keeping his spirit strong and motivated for the strain necessary to work out day by. Do you work out spiritually? Do you work out spiritually? I know you go to, some of y'all don't even go to the gym. You know the Bible says that bodily exercise is some gain. But spiritual exercise? And so that's why we have prayer meeting. That's why we have Bible study. That's why we have Sunday school. We have all those things to get you to exercise your spiritual wherewithal. So when you leave here, you, you don't leave here a child or you leave here desiring more milk. The scripture says that like a baby desires desire milk, you should desire the word of God. Now, well, how does a baby desire milk? He cries for it. Do you cry for this? No, you cry when the devil's whooping you. So, however, 
However, the greatest fighters, like, you know, one of the fighters that I've always admired was, was Mayweather. Why? Mayweather, you might not like he's big, bad, and boisterous, and all that money and all that, you know, but guess what? The guy takes his craft seriously. One of the most disciplined body. He don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't do none of that. Just train. That's why he's been able to beat everybody. Nothing can supplement hard training. And you have to do this to the point of exhaustion. I come from the old school. We used to do all night prayer. I wonder if I said this week we're going to do all night prayer. How many people are going to get it? And when you do all night prayer, well, and we've done it here in this church. Have me call them. We've done it. What you do, you come here about 12 at midnight. Somebody starts praying, and you just keep going. You just keep going. You keep going until that sun comes up. And we done done it more than once. But guess what? This high-tech church, folks don't want to do it. All they want to do is go out to eat and go on vacations and go shopping. And then when all hell break loose, they want to come to the church and then talk to the pastor. They want somebody to pray for them. No power at all. And they call themselves a Christian, but they're out of shape. You, you and I have to live disciplined lives. Somebody say disciplined lives. The, words, the word strive is a Greek word. Watch this. It's where they get the word agony from. It, it, the word striveth, striveth. Go, go look at uh, 925. First, first Corinthians 925. First Corinthians 925. In the King James. It said every man that strive. That word striveth is the Greek word agonizome, agonizome, it's where the word agony come from, agonizing, have you agonized in prayer, you know, I'll give you an example, the Bible said that Jesus realized he was going to be crucified, and he began to pray earnestly in agony, he began to pray, the Bible said he prayed, and it was so dramatic, he sweated, and it was like blood coming off him, have you prayed like that? I have. No blood came on me, but I prayed all night because I was in a, in a, in a, in a pickle. And, get, and listen, you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was in the hospital. I'm going to have minor surgery on my finger and my elbow soon. And I heard a guy in the hospital in a wheelchair. He says, he says I put my 100% trust in my pacemaker. I was walking, and I heard him say that. He said, he said, all my trust, all my trust, he said, 100% of my trust in my pacemaker. If he could have heard me, and said, not mine. My trust is in Jesus. My trust is in Jesus. Not in no pacemaker, but that's how some people think. He, th he thought he's being kept alive by a machine and not by God. And I just heard it as I was passing by. And I said, man, how foolish is he? So you're that way when all you do is eat carnal things. Striveth. It means an agony. I'm striving to get better. I'm trying to be a better husband. Are you? Are you really? Who, who, who are you being accountable to? I'm trying to be a better wife. Really? You sure? Who are you accountable? I'm trying to be a better person. Pastor, really, who are you accountable to? What's your start? What's your goals? What are your goals? Strive. Strive. The cat's been singing. The cat's been striving. Mark is over there playing striving. He didn't learn how to play that when he got here Sunday. He'd been doing that for a while. He had to strive at it. You think I just started doing this yesterday? There's been a striving. This ain't easy. It means an agony. Agony. Agony means that when you do it, it don't sound right. Folk laugh at you. How many times they laugh at you, Marcus? How many times they laughed at you, Ryan? How many times they laughed at you? Sir, what? 
in agony and you felt the shame, but guess what sin there was a call in your life? You kept back at it again. While they laughed and you cried, you kept playing anyway until they stopped laughing and they start giving God glory. But watch this. You had to strive. You had to put your time in. We want the glory of God, but we don't put no time in. We want the blessing of God, but we don't put no time in. We want God to uh, want the blessing to overtake us, but you ain't given nothing. Folk want to be blessed like, 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 like Tyler Perry, but you put two cents in the offering. Remember, the scripture said, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. And it, it has nothing to do with the amount. It has everything to do with how much you, how much you keep. Let that sink in for a minute. God don't look at what you give. He looks at what you keep. So the whole idea is that I got to control my body. Or it control me. If you don't control it, it'll control you. How many men tonight, and I, I rebuke that spirit, will leave work and not make it home? Because they can't control their body. They can't control their thoughts. And so when their thoughts get, get sideways, they force their body to go places they ain't got no business going. That's what Romans 12 and 1 said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies. That you present your bodies. When? In the morning. Early as possible. Before the devil starts getting at you. Before he starts speaking into your ear. That you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is thy reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. You got to know some stuff about your body. Just can't take your body and do anything you want with it. Can't take your body and lay down with anybody you want to lay down with. They say if you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. And see, since that last mistake you made, you think, that you think that, okay, so um, I'm, 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 I'm several moons or seasons from the last time I made this big mistake. But see, there's nothing preventing you from making that mistake all over again because you have no control. You know, the Bible said in the book of Proverbs, uh, I believe it's um, 24, 28, something like that, like 25, 28 says that a, a man that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that has no walls. You can't control yourself. Imagine you're a pastor of a church, but you can't control yourself. You can't control yourself. Can God trust you? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. I didn't even get a chance to finish. Look, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. You are not your own. You keep acting like you, 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 you your own. You don't own you. It says you were bought with a price. And you act like the price was cheap. The way you act. You act like you act like a two dollar, you know what? But and the problem is you don't know your worth. But if he died for me, that changes the game. Why? Because the righteous judge died for my worthlessness self, which means there had to be value in who I am. For you are brought with a price, therefore glorify God with what? Your body. And in your spirit, which is God's. So I got to control my mind. Watch this. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 7. Here's with it. It's with it. It's sure with right here. Right here. This stops us from running, Anna. Right here. Right here. 
stops us from coming to church right here. Everything between these ears. We start listening to the wrong things. We start looking at the wrong things. We start listening to the wrong things. It says, for they that are after the flesh. So you know they're coming to church, they're really after the flesh. They do mind the things of the flesh. That's why, that's why what, what people say is so critically important to them. When, you, when you're spiritual, you only care about spiritual things. You know that, you listen, ain't nobody here perfect. All of us have something in our, in, in our, in our past that we're not too proud of. We all are ex-something, ex-ho, ex-bum, ex-liar. Come on, ex-drug addict, ex-pimp, ex-prostitute, ex adultery you're ex something so you're gonna worry about you you in a, you're in a good you're in a good space but what you got to realize is that you can't stay in X so you you if you I heard a pastor say this some of us are still ain't ain't got rid of some of them exes so you know that you're not as spiritual when everything you listen to is carnal everything you hear what people say bothers you. You, you, you. When I come here, I'm locked in. Somebody said locked in. Why? Because if I don't lock in, the enemy begins to speak into my head and my heart and my mind and get me twisted. Who said that about me? They said I can't preach. Who? Who? I remember being so, so naive and so insecure, always trying to please people. Why? Because I was mining the things of the flesh. When you mind the things of the flesh, you cannot please God. Simply that. For they that are, are, are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and death. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, but is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, so a lot of people come to church and they're going through spasms because they're still yet carnal. They haven't yet transitioned into being a saint. So there's, there's carnality. How do I know it? Because every little thing bothers you. You're more sensitive to me than you are to him. You're more sensitive to her than you are to him. You're more sensitive when people look at you. You see, why do they look at me like that? No, baby, ain't nobody looking at you. You're just self-conscious. Got a lot of people who come to church guilty and self-conscious. Way down, I said way down with all kinds of issues. You can't see it because it's, it's in the spirit. But there's weights on them. And they struggle with it. And you start interacting with them, you'll see, you can tell they're not free. Because they're mining carnal things. When you're after the spirit, you, you're, you're chasing the things of the spirit. That's what that song, walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew and the mercies shine bright. Shine all around me by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. See how we got it? We started getting into it, man. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. You saw, come where the dew on the mercy. It, because that's a part of who we are. Wasn't acting. That means that we are, we are conscious of spiritual things. We're spiritually minded. So when I came in, I said, I want to hear the song. I said, I know. And once we started singing it, we kept on. They didn't want to stop. Why? Because we're sensitive to the spirit. So they have to keep asking, the bishop like me? The bishop like me? Come on off that old crazy stuff. Nah, he like me? It's a job, man. We here working. Anybody I like you, I, 
It ain't whether I like you or not because I've been commanded to love you. This ain't whether I like you, two thumbs up, two thumbs. Do she like me? I don't think he liked me. They ain't supposed to like you. They're supposed to love you. And you struggle with love because you don't even love yourself. And you, you struggle with, with, with love so you, you have a distrusting spirit to those people that are trying to love you. You got to get healed first before you can express everything God has for you. My time is up. I'm not out of words. Play something soft for you, son. Got to control your spirit, man. I want a crown. That's what the song said. I shall, I shall wear a crown. I shall wear what? A crown. When it's what? When it's over. I'm going to put on my robe, tell the story about how I made it over. This is about a crown, beloved. This ain't about a, whether you're going to get an, another house. This is a house that ain't made with hands. Do you? Do you live your life with the finish line in mind? Do you live your life understanding that each morning you get up, whether you've got arthritis or not, you're running a race. And whether you, whether you are physically able to run or not, this has nothing to do with physicality. This has everything to do with spirit. As long as my mind is still working, I'm still running. Because my mind working, guess what? I can still pray. One could chase a thousand, but two could put ten thousand to flight. And watch this, I can do all things. Why? I was made in his image. The, the, the centurion asked Jesus, he said, I had, a, I had a servant that was sick to death. And, and he said, Jesus was going to come. He said, No, 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 you don't hang out. You don't have to come to my house. He said, Just send the word. He says, send the word because I'm a man in authority and a man under authority. And I know who you are. And I can embrace your word spiritually for my life. The reason I'm able to embrace that word, watch this, is, is because I realize that I'm running a race. Hebrew writer says that, that, that we have a cloud of witnesses. Every morning you get up. You say, come on, Denise. Come on, Denise. Come on. Come on. Your ancestor. Come on, Colin. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sherwood. Come on. Come on. I know you don't feel like it, but come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Run, son. Run. Run. Run like you've got some business. Run like you want to win. Discipline yourself. Keep your body under control. Or oh, you're going to be a castaway. You're going to be disqualified. It is my prayer tonight that nobody I minister to have been disqualified. Nobody, nobody I minister to be disqualified. Father, help us where we're at as it relates to our individual race, as it relates to this corporate race. Give us an understanding of where we're at as it relates to the race, how we're running. Are we intensified? Is, has our run, has our race intensified? Are we striving for the mastery, God? Help us, help us. Help us today, God. Run better, run better. Give us grace today to be goal-orientated. Help us today, God. Appreciate ourselves much better. Take better care of ourselves. In the marvelous name of Jesus. May we pull up the hood and take another look and see the magnificence of your workmanship. Is that what the Bible said? That we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, we give you thanks for your word tonight that has gone forth and it ain't coming back empty or void. But it will accomplish 
what it's been sent to do. It's been sent to encourage the runners tonight. You're running your race. No runner runs flabby with a flabby attitude. Nobody runs and understand that you're supposed to be running and not walking. No, no fast walk, no jog. This is running. This is pressure packed. This is intense, intensified. Help us today, God. Get back in the race. I come against the spirit of, of procrastination. I come against the spirit of loneliness. I come against the spirit of giving up. The devil's a lie. As long as you got breath in your body, you got a mind that's still functioning. You can't give up. You can't give in and you can't give up. Generations of people have, have come to this place to get you where you're at, not so that you could stop running. So you charge and not get back in the race. In Jesus' name, somebody clap their hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take them an offering. I'm running, man. I'm running. I'm ready to run. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards your offering basket. Father, we thank you for everything that has been said and done in your name. May it be glorified. Take that which we've given from our hands. Take that which has been given online and magnify it. We speak life. We speak our new building. We speak our new membership. We declare the riches of God will make us rich and add no sorrow. I speak an ambulance of resources. I speak of a, a deluge of money drop on your people's lives right now. Inheritance. Money come from the north, from all over God. It's our season, our time to receive. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Let's stand for the benediction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ryan, I'm a runner, man. I'm running, man. I said, I'm running, Sherwood. I'm, listen, I've been running for Jesus, and I ain't tired yet. I ain't tired yet. I said, I ain't tired yet. I said, I ain't tired yet. Don't get tired. Be not weary in well doing for a new season. You shall reap if you faint not. This ain't the season to faint. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you tonight, tomorrow morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. Get up! Get up! You're in a race. A race for your soul. Come on now. You better run better. I'm praying for a better race. Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. We love you. Good night. Want to see you on Saturday, Father's Day. We're going to be at, at Top Golf. Come out, all fathers. We're going to celebrate and then have a great Father's Day message on Sunday. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Take us home, man. <laughs>